G'day fools, Scott Phillips here with the next in our series of our favorite investment books from the Motley Fool Investment Team and a couple of other Motley Fool staff. We're looking forward to bringing you all together a big range of books that our staff have read, have loved, and have got something out of. I'm with investing guru Trevor Machedzi right now. Trevor, good day. Thank you, Scott. Good day. How are you? Mate, I'm exceptionally well, and I'm excited to hear about your book. There are so many great investment books, mate, and it's so hard for anyone to know where to get started, let alone people maybe who are literally getting started investing and trying to work out where do I start? I walk to the investment bookshelf, either literally, although these days it's more likely to be online and say, man, there's 10,000 investing titles. Where do I start? That's what this series is all about, mate. So let's hear, let's hear from you. What is your number one investing book? Scott, yes, Scott. So my number one investment book, which, is, which I always recommend to people that ask me, especially people that are... Uh, people that want to start the invest the investing mm. journey, it's a book called The Little Book That Builds Wealth. Okay, that's a good written... that's a good promise. That's a good start. <laughs> I can't Definitely. go badly, surely. <laughs> uh, it's called The Little Book That Built Wealth. It uh. was written almost ten years ago by a guy named uh, Pat Dorsey. Mm -hmm. He was the former head of equity research at Morningstar. Okay, so you should know and, what he's talking about then. Oh, definitely. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and um, one thing I really love about this book is it's such an easy read, okay. even for someone without any investment background. And nice. it's dense, it's concise. You can pretty much read this book within three or four hours. But it's written quite nicely and easy in easy English, so anyone can understand what the book is, is all about. Perfect. That's awesome. So I'm guessing it's called Little Book That Builds Worth. I'm guessing a little book. I'm guessing it also gives some tips as to how to build wealth. Are there any key themes from the book, mate? Kind of the, I guess I'll, I'll ask you to summarize. How is it that Pat Dorsey thinks we can build wealth? <laughs> sure. So just to give some context, right? So the legendary investor Warren Buffett popularized the concept of business, our economic mod, mm -hmm. or in simple English, business competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So what this means is that any business to be successful and, you know, Make, uh, make so much profit for a very long time, it needs something unique that protects that business from uh, competition. Right. So what Pat Dorsey did in this wonderful book is that he did a deep dive analysis on the different kinds of business competitive advantages and mm -hmm. economic mods. So he just, did, he just went one step further from Warren Buffett and then he did, he did a deep dive and he identified four different kinds and for each one of those kinds, he provides examples, what it is, why is this a, a, a competitive advantage, and mm -hmm. you know, how, how a business can, can actually build this position and defense its profit and profitability for a very long, for the, for a very long period of time. Nice. I like that, mate. We're all, we're all for uh, businesses that are profitable and can remain profitable. It's harder than most people know, right? You kind of yes. think businesses make money, they're always going to make money, but the capitalism, you know, every time someone's making some money, someone else is looking at that business saying, hey, I could have some of those profits too. If I could do it better or cheaper or faster or something, yes. I could have some of that. And so businesses are always to some degree, even the ones that feel like they've been around together forever and will be around forever, they're all still trying to defend their positions, right? They're yes. trying to make sure their competitors can't catch them up. Yes, definitely, Scott. I mean, that's the one key reason. Because I think two things I like about this book, besides the four, um, four different kinds mm. that he talks about in the book. He also went on and talked about what he calls false, like, like uh, competitive advantages. So mm -hmm. things that can appear as a competitive advantage, but over time it gets like eroded away. So it, it takes a very balanced look at both sides of the equation. Beautiful. Mate, I'll ask you, are there a couple of things specifically you've taken out of this book with a particular insights? Were there some of those moats, for example, or, yeah. or just some, some thoughts you kind of go, you know what, what I really loved about that book was when he said this or wrote that or talked about this thing. Are there, are there a couple of kind of highlights that come to mind? Yeah, sure, Scott. I think so. It's very, very easy because the key highlights for the book are the four different kinds <laughs> right, okay. of the economic. I mean, 80% uh, of the book especially yeah. uh, talks about those four different kinds. So the first one, right, is what he calls the intangible assets. Okay. And here he's talking about brands. For example, like Louis Vuitton, right? It's a brand that has been built over time. So even if I'm a good um, fashion, design, fashion designer, it's extremely very hard to crack the brand because the Louis Vuitton brand has been built over time. 
and and other examples of intangible assets are like patent protection mm -hmm. a, a good example is this is what we're having right now with the pharmaceutical companies that have had patents mm -hmm. over the uh, covid 19 vaccines so the patent protection protects the company from competition and you know so so this is like two examples of what you call intangible assets nice. uh, the next example of the competitive advantage is what you call the network effects here it talks about a business model where the value of the business or the value of the product increases as more people use that particular um, uh, product so for a good example is this is what you have with facebook or with instagram or with twitter the more people that are on Facebook, the more valuable Facebook becomes, right? And the good thing about this business model is that even if today anyone can, if you're a programmer today, you can create the code behind Facebook, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be successful simply because you just don't have that network effect that Facebook does have. Mm -hmm. The third um, competitive advantage he spoke about is what we call high switching costs. And High switching cost means that once a company or a person has adopted the product, it just becomes extremely complex, time consuming and costly for them to move from that one product to another. A very good example of this is software business, you know, which, which, is, which are some of the type of business that we love here in the Motley Fool. Yep. So once you've installed a software, it, it's, it's extremely difficult to switch to another software even if someone comes and they're offering you a better price. And then the last um, business advantage that you spoke about are called cost advantages or unique assets. Here, he simply talks about business that have got a unique asset that is almost extremely difficult for another competitor to get it. And a very good example is this, is uh, companies that are in waste management uh, industries. And the, the reason is because it's extremely difficult to get landfills or recycling plants because of um, environmental concerns mm -hmm. and also because government doesn't allow you to just throw your debt anyway, right? So, <laughs> so if yeah. a company has got, a, 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 a owns those landfills and those recycling plants, it's extremely difficult for another competitor you know, to, to, to make a footing in, into those markets. So Scott, those are the four key takeaways from the book around a building, building a competitive advantage, which allows the company to profit and for a very, very long time. Trevor, that is brilliant, mate. I almost don't feel like I need to read the book now. You've done such a thorough job of summarizing it, but I'm going to assume that not only do you get a recitation of those four you've just been through, but some examples as well. So despite Trevor's fantastic summary, I told you he was an investing guru, didn't I? Despite his fantastic summary, go and read The Little Book That Builds Wealth by Pat Dorsey. Speaking of doing things, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for the Motley Fool Australia's YouTube channel because there's more videos like this one, more investing books, and also more videos featuring people like Trevor talking about stocks, talking about issues and opportunities. You don't want to miss the rest of this Motley Fool YouTube channel. It's free. Come on, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss the next lot of good stuff from all of our team, including Trevor. Mate, thank you for spending a bit of time and summarizing that book for us. You've done a wonderful job. I'm probably due for a reread from the sound of it, so I might go and do it over the weekend. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching, yeah. fools. And for thank all. you, Scott.